The day we're taking a look at these MLB matches, which are happening on Tuesday, September 20, 2022, and giving you match breakdowns, betting tips and predictions in general on these games. Welcome back to High Stakes, let's get straight into it, also, don't forget to subscribe to get notified as soon as we release these sport prediction videos, and if you would like more betting tips and predictions, then check out our Patreon in the link down below. Our new Patreon is a way for us to help you improve your chances of making more money. Multiple plans are available for each and every one of you, you can get 30 extra betting picks all the way up to 360 extra betting picks per month. Stop wasting hours of your time searching for bad betting picks that ends up costing you a lot of money. Join the high stakes Patreon now and get the best betting picks. Going back to our video we will give you two betting picks for each game, a team pick and a total pick based on facts and detailed explanation. So make sure to watch our videos till the end so you don't miss any of our picks. Cincinnati Reds vs Boston Red Sox. The Red Sox at bottom of the Al East. They are nine and a half games behind the final wild card spot in the American League, while the Reds are already eliminated from the playoff race. Hereof, it's tough to predict the outcome. The Red Sox's offense has been inconsistent of late, and the Reds, whose pitching staff is doing a decent job in September, certainly stand a chance. Cincinnati's bullpen owns a 3.38 ERA in 50.2 innings pitched this month, while the Red Sox pen has accounted for a 2.83 ERA across just 28.2 innings of work. Boston's relievers might be busy Tuesday, as the Reds' offense has a nice chance to get things going against Brian Bello, who's yielded three runs in three of his last four starts. I'm looking for another strong performance from Nick Lodolo, so give me the Reds at the money line odds. Our team pick is. Cincinnati Reds for the win. Our total pick is. Under 8.5 points. Chicago Cubs vs Miami Marlins. The Cubs were not expected to be contenders in 2022, but after erasing their 108-year World Series drought in 2016, Chicago certainly isn't eager to put their fans through any more pain. Since then, the Cubbies have parted ways with fan favorites Anthony Rizzo and Chris Bryant, promising that future stars will take their spots amongst Chicago sports lore. That hasn't been the case so far, but the team could generate more optimism for next season with a strong finish. Accomplishing that will not be unreasonable, with 12 of their remaining 15 games coming against non-contenders. To some outsiders, Miami is pretty much what they were expected to be. That said, a fair amount of experts believe the Marlins could show signs of life in 2022 and potentially contend for a wild card spot. In a crowded National League East division with three likely playoff teams to contend with, that certainly hasn't been the case. Prior to Monday's game against Chicago, Miami has been on a downward slide, dropping two of three to the Washington Nationals and six of nine in the month of September to the rival Atlanta Braves, Philadelphia Phillies and Mets. It wasn't supposed to be pretty for Miami, but would it be too much to ask for the Marlins to win ugly a bit more often? Chicago surrendered double-digit runs to Miami on Monday, but that's unlikely to happen again on Tuesday. There's reason to believe in Chicago as a road underdog after their road sweep of the Mets, as well. The Cubs may not need to score too many runs to beat the offensively challenged Marlins, but their lineup does have an edge over Miami's. With a big picture in mind, Chicago looks like a juicy dog as they attempt to reverse their fortune at Lone Pot Field before traveling to Pittsburgh for four more winnable games. 30-year-old right-hander Adrian Sampson, 2-5 3.48 RA, will take the mound for the Cubs in this matchup. Last time out, Sampson fired six shutout frames during a 4-1 road victory against New York. The Miami Marlins are 13 games below .500 at home, and their inability to score runs has been their downfall. On Monday, of Brian De La Cruz's third inning grand slam staked Miami to a 5-2 lead. John Birdie and Charles LeBlanc also went deep for the Marlins, who improved to 61-87 on the year. Miami manager Don Mattingly will counter with talented right-hander Pablo Lopez, 9-10 3.99 ERA, on Tuesday. Through 160-plus innings, Lopez has struck out 156 batters and owns a solid 1.22 whip. Chicago 2B Nico Horner, triceps, has missed seven consecutive games and remains listed as day-to-day. -day. Through 148 games, Chicago ranks 15th in ops and 23rd in runs scored. For the season, Miami ranks 27th in ops and 27th in runs scored. Take the under seven runs. Toronto Blue Jays vs Philadelphia Phillies. Toronto is opening a six-game road trip after wrapping up an eight-game homestand on Sunday. The Blue Jays took three out of five against Tampa Bay last week, before winning two out of three against Baltimore over the weekend. They won the first two games against the Orioles in a 6-3 final before losing the finale in a 5-4 final. Toronto is in second place in the American League East, trailing New York by 5.5 games in the standings. 
The Blue Jays are in a good spot as far as the playoffs are concerned, as they are holding on to the top AL wild card spot. Philadelphia has been a streaky team during the second half of the season, going on multiple winning and losing streaks. The Phillies won five consecutive games last week, sweeping Washington and winning the first two games of their series in Miami. They have lost four games since then, dropping their finale against the Marlins before getting swept by Atlanta over the weekend. Philadelphia wrapped up a six-game road trip with that series and is now back home for a six-game homestand. The Phillies are two games ahead of Milwaukee for the final NL wild card spot. There is more pressure on Philadelphia based on the current wild card standings, which I don't necessarily think is a good thing heading into the series. Toronto has the advantage in the starting pitching matchup as well. Stripling has been in great form of late, recording six consecutive quality starts. Gibson has allowed 12 earned runs in his last three starts, so he is not pitching well. Toronto has won five of its last six games against Philadelphia and has gone 11-2 in its last 13 road games. The Blue Jays are 13-4 in their last 17 trips to Philadelphia, and I like them to win again on Tuesday. Our team pick is. Toronto for the win. Toronto is clinging to the final wild card spot with just 15 games remaining. Entering this series with the Phillies, they hold a two-game lead over the Rays and a four-game lead over the Baltimore Orioles, who are on the outside looking in. Throughout the year, the Jays have been one of the best defensive teams in the majors. They are top five in on-base percentage and slugging and score the sixth most runs in the bigs. If they continue to get quality innings from back in the rotation guys like Stripling, they will be dangerous in the playoffs. Entering this series with the Blue Jays, the Phillies are in a dogfight for the National League wild card. They hold the final spot, but the Milwaukee Brewers are breathing down their neck, only two games back with 15 games remaining. This is a huge series against the Blue Jays, and the Phillies can make up ground and potentially pass the San Diego Padres for the second spot. They trail them by just half a game. Both these teams are in playoff mode with more than a few weeks remaining. The Phillies and Blue Jays have been excellent from this dish this year. They are averaging 4.65 runs per game, both top 10 in baseball. Coming into the season, both clubs were expected to put up runs, but the starting pitching has been a pleasant surprise. The Phillies are giving up 4.18 runs per game, with the Blue Jays right beside them. At this same juncture last year, Philadelphia was allowing 4.60 runs, so they have shored up that area in a big way this season. The Blue Jays love smacking home runs, ranked 9th with 177 dingers this year. But, the Phillies do a good job limiting the long ball, holding teams to the third fewest home runs. I expect Toronto to win this game, but it will be a lower scoring affair. Take the under.